Welcome back, everybody. It is April 30th, 2022, and we are continuing our series following in the footsteps of Jesus. Our scripture is Matthew 5, 1, and this is what it says. One day as the crowds were gathering, Jesus went up to the mountainside with his disciples and sat down to teach them. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, as we look at your words today, as they describe your character, who you were, may we desire to be just what you are. Amen. Very short list today of scriptures that we will cover. And as always, I encourage you to go to the PDF version of this sermon for the notes. Okay. So far in our discipleship journey, we have talked about assumptions, transformation, counting the cost, surrender, adjust, obey, which was last week, which brings us to today's sermon, which is developing the character of Christ. As our scripture said, one day the crowds were gathering. Jesus went up the mountainside with his disciples and sat down to teach them. Blessed is the one who realizes his need for Jesus. Developing Jesus' character involves dependence. Accepting the fact that we can no longer live life independent from God knowing that Jesus is our only hope. We leave self-sufficiency at the side of the road because he will call us to do things that are humanly impossible as we are placed in situations that will require faith and dependence on him. Blessed is the one that mourns, Jesus continued. Developing Jesus' character involves shifting our focus from the things of the world to the things of eternity. We will see the sinfulness of our own sins. We will mourn over the separation from God that they have caused and we will desire restoration and reconciliation. We will also begin to see the world as Jesus sees the world, a place of desperate need, a place steeped in darkness, a place unaware that it is dancing toward eternal loss, and we will mourn over it as Jesus does. Blessed is the one who is humble. Developing Jesus' character involves understanding exactly what we are before a holy and just God. Humility doesn't mean a lack of power. Rather, humility means we choose to hand over our power and insistence on personal control to Jesus. The humble are those who trust God and surrender to his authority, even when we can't make sense of the circumstances. Blessed is the one who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Developing Jesus' character involves leaving our self-righteousness also at the side of the road with our self-sufficiency recognizing that it amounts to nothing more than a pile of filthy, stinky, disgusting rags. We are no longer nourished by our own righteousness, and so we grow hungry and thirsty for the righteousness of Jesus. We yearn for the transformed life that is found only in Him. Blessed is the one who is merciful, Developing Jesus' character involves chesed, loyalty, goodness, kindness, devotion, faithfulness, favor, mercy, and unchanging love. 
going above and beyond what's expected. Chesed moved Jesus to action and it will lead his disciples to be moved to action as well. Blessed is the one whose heart is pure. Developing Jesus' character involves a change in our motives. As we hunger and thirst for God's righteousness, he fills us with his authentic, internal righteousness. It replaces our outer shows of fake righteousness. And as that happens, our intentions and our motives become pure. Blessed is the one who works for peace. Developing Jesus' character involves committing to peace. A peacemaker resolves conflict, does not cause conflict. A peacemaker is quick to apologize, does not seek revenge, and he loves his enemies. As Francis of Assisi said once, where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Blessed is the one who is mocked and persecuted and lied about because he is my father, follower and, God li and lives for God. Developing Jesus' character, character involves knowing full well that we will be mocked and persecuted and our motives will be misinterpreted and misrepresented because we choose loyalty to Jesus above all else. We know that nothing will be fully made right until Jesus returns, so we stop wasting our time worrying about this thing and that thing. We become less concerned about personal rights or slights or injustices and more concerned about introducing others to the only sure guarantee of hope in a future. Jesus continues, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Developing Jesus' character involves having a positive, positive impact for Jesus in every situation we find ourselves in, plus active participation in the Great Commission. Salt makes everything around it salty, and light permeates even the darkest of corners. And so should it be with the disciples of Jesus. Mother Teresa said this, let no one come to you without leaving better and happier. Be the living expression of God's kindness, kindness in your face, kindness in your eyes, kindness in your smile. You have heard that the law of Moses says, but I say, and then Jesus goes into several commandments, and you know what he does? He makes them harder. Listen, he says, do not murder. You've heard it said, do not murder. But I'm telling you, if you're angry with someone, you're subject to judgment. You have heard the law of Moses say, don't commit adultery. But I say, anyone who looks at a woman has committed adultery. You've heard the law of Moses say, a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a letter of divorce. But I tell you, if a man divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, causes her to commit adultery. You've heard the law of Moses say, do not break your vow. But I say, don't make any vows. Just simply say yes, I will, or no, I won't. 
your word is enough. We've heard the law of Moses say, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say, don't resist the evil person. You've heard the law of Moses say, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Doesn't really say that, by the way. But I say, love your enemies. Developing Jesus' character involves realizing that law-breaking begins where no one can see it in the mind. Obedience is not adherence to a set of rules. And I talked about this last week. In fact, I talk about it all the time. Obedience is not adherence to a set of rules, but devotion to a person. And that moves us beyond external rules, the do's and the don't do's that hang on the wall. And it moves that to an internal reality of obedience based on loyalty, devotion, and gratitude. And this is what Paul said. When the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no conflict with the law. In them, there is no conflict. Jesus continues in his Sermon on the Mount. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly in the street corners and in the synagogue so that everyone will come to see them. When you fast, don't make it obvious like the hypocrites do. Whose applause do you seek? The applause of men? or the applause of nail-scarred hands. Developing Jesus' character involves becoming a stealth servant. Disciples of Jesus don't make choices to participate based on how much publicity they will receive, or to what degree they will be the center of attention. They don't do anything hoping for recognition and reward. They serve from a place of humility and gratitude. The stealth servant. I tell you, Jesus says, don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or clothes. Why be like the pagans who are so deeply concerned about these things? Your Father knows what you need. Developing Jesus' character involves infinite trust in the provision and power of God. Disciples of Jesus are not warriors. They are trusters. Finally, he says, stop judging others and you won't be judged. For others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to judge you. And why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own? Hypocrites, Jesus said. First get rid of the log in your own. And then perhaps you can see and deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Developing Jesus' character involves careful and considered judgment. Disciples of Jesus are not judgy, and they do not throw judgment around as if it is their right and prerogative to do so. They are fully aware of their own faults and shortcomings. They realize their own need for Jesus and are fully committed to personal transformation. If persistent and willful, willful, willful sin <laughs> continues in the body of Christ, it is dealt with as it should be dealt with, but always in a way that is redemptive. 
In all these things, Jesus was our example. He was God, and yet he depended fully on his Father. He mourned over the world he came to save. He was humble to the point of death. He yearned to impart his righteousness to all he came to save. He was merciful. He extended has said. His motives were pure. He worked for peace. He was mocked, persecuted, and lied about every day of his life. He was salt and light. His obedience flowed from his love for God, and he exuded love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. He was not motivated by man's praise or by his censure. He sought recognition from one person only, and that was his father. He did not concern himself with the cares of this life, but only with doing what his father told him to do. He was careful with his judgments and did not needlessly cause pain. He spoke the truth and he upheld the truth, but he did so with tears in his eyes and redemption in his heart. You might look at this list and think, what you are asking is impossible. Yet that is the beauty of the life with Jesus. As we walk with him and we take to heart his example to us, we slowly but surely become like him. Morphing happens. And no doubt about it, the way to identify a person is by the kind of fruit that is produced. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your example. We are not left to wonder what becoming like you looks like. We have ample evidence. We may not like it. We may think it's too difficult. We may be intimidated. But we're not left to wonder what we're supposed to do. Lord, help us to each one of us just embrace this journey. And like we talked about last week, surrender, adjust, obey, get on the road, look at what you did, and determine in our hearts to follow you wherever that takes us. May we begin to be like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, that's it for this time. Next time, we are going to talk about faith. So we'll see you then. Bye.